morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think we are ready to start. Uh, and uh, I will just uh, request the members of the colloquium to come and meet uh, the four vice president of the PAP so that we could enter together and uh, start our program. Thank you. May, may we all stand to welcome the four vice president of the Pan African Parliament. Mesdames et Messieurs, uh, ladies and, and uh, gentlemen, I'll be speaking in French, uh, but for the welcome uh, ceremony, for the opening ceremony, I'll perhaps speak in English. Uh, and uh, I want to advise that uh, the meeting will be supported by interpretation. Uh, for those speaking French, there's, there will be no other interpretation in other languages. And we are aware that the participants are English and uh, French speaking. We shall start our uh, opening ceremony by, um, first of all, uh, the African Union anthem, uh, which will be followed uh, by a number of, uh, of uh, speeches. And I think as I'm speaking, uh, I hope the technical team is ready with the AU anthem. Um, the speeches uh, will consist in, first of all, a welcome uh, speech from uh, the uh, officer in charge of the office of the clerk of the Pan African Parliament, followed by a welcome speech by uh, Ms. Zuraya, the president of the colloquium, uh, the Africa colloquium to the uh, legal council. Um, then we'll have a speech uh, by the patron of the colloquium, uh, or rather his uh, representative. Then we'll have a keynote uh, address by the uh, Honorable uh, Chief Fortune uh, Charumira Zefania, the fourth vice pre president of the Pan-African Parliament. Uh, but before we have uh, the AU uh, and them, we shall call for a minute of uh, prayer 
to give an opportunity for everyone to meditate in his own religion. Thank you very much. Um, so if the technical team is ready, we can have the AU and them. May we be seated. Veillons nous asseoir. Honorable Chief Fortune Charumira, the fourth Vice President of the Pan African Parliament. Honorable Joshua Malinga, advisor to the Office of the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Madame Zuraya Adikari, President of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Council to Parliament, members of the Council to the Africa Colloquium of Legal Council to Parliament, Mr. Dube Kudakwashi, Executive Director of the Africa Disability Alliance, Professor Franz Fulion, uh, who is not yet here, Director of the Center for Human Rights. Mr. Tato Tabo Molefe, Director of For Lexis Nexis. Dear members of the Africa Colloquium of for Legal Council to Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Pan African Parliament for the fifth. Africa Colloquium to Legal Council, which will take place from the 29th, from today, up to the 21st of uh, October. We are delighted to have you with us. I have no better words to welcome you to PAP. Uh, that's why I will call for the officer in charge of uh, the office of the uh, the clerk of the Pan African Parliament to come and address to you a word of welcome. Madam Charlotte, you are welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Honorable Chief Fortune, Sefania Charumbira, 
Honorable Joshua Malinga at uh, fourth, uh, sorry, let me start. Honorable Chief Fortune Safanaya Rumbira, the fourth Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament. Honorable Joshua Malinga, advisor in the Office of the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. Uh, Ms. Suraya Adikari, Chief Legal Advisor, Parliament of the Republic of South Africa and the President of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Councils in Parliament. Members of the Council of the African Colloquium of Legal Councils to Parliament. Mr. Kudakwashe Dube, Executive Director of the Africa Disability Alliance. Professor Veluen, Director of the Center for Human Rights. Mr. Tabo Molefi, Commercial Director of Nexus, Lex Lexus Nexus. Members of the African Colloquium of Legal Councils to Parliament. Members of the Secretariat of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Councils to Parliament. <coughs> Staff of the Pan-African Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. On behalf of Mr. Gali Masaharo, acting clerk of the Pan-African Parliament, and on my own behalf, and it gives me great pleasure and honor to welcome you all here at the Pan-African Parliament in Midrand in the Republic of South Africa for the fifth colloquium on legal, of legal councils to parliaments, to African parliaments, under the theme, Efficient, Effective Parliaments in Africa, the role of legal council. This colloquium, which brings together legal minds from African parliaments and other valuable stakeholders in the legal in the legislative processes of African parliaments provides an opportunity for participants to reflect and exchange on the role of legal counsel to parliaments in making African parliaments more efficient and effective, including by supporting the process of ratification, domestication of the new protocol of the PAP and other African treaties. As you may know, parliaments play a critical role in the life of a nation. It thus performs three main functions. It makes laws, changes existing laws, and repeals which are no longer needed. Represent and articulate the views and wishes of the citizens in decision-making processes. And oversee the activities of the executive so that the government is accountable to the people. In achieving these goals, parliaments require the support of a strong, effective, and efficient secretariat and in which legal counsel constitute an indispensable pillar of strength. 15 years after its inception, as the legislative body of the African Union, the Pan-African Parliament continues to chart its way towards operationalizing formal and informal mechanisms for, men for meaningful engagements with the people of Africa and civil society organizations, including professional associations of a critical category of parliamentary staff which are critical to the effectiveness and efficiency of our parliaments. The mandate of the Pan-African Parliament as a representative of the people of Africa cannot be conceived and implemented without strengthening our ties or promoting the work of the professional associations such as the African Colloquium of Legal Councils to Parliaments. It is, that, it is in that vein that the Pan-African Parliament accepted to co-host the fifth colloquium of legal counsel to parliaments in Midrand, as it contributes to the achievements of the Pan-African Parliament of one of its core objectives, which consists of promoting the harmonization and coordination of laws and policies of the African Union member states for the realization of the Africa we want, as contemplated in the African Union Agenda 2063 and the role of the legal counsel to that effect cannot be overemphasized. In view of the themes to be discussed, I'm confident that this meeting will not only allow for sharing of knowledge, but also the most important exchange of experience and best practices on how to achieve an effective and efficient legal counsel to African parliaments in view of the emerging challenges and opportunities of our times. As indicated on the program that you have received, it is significant to note that the presentations and discussions will focus on a wide range of, trop of topical issues which will enable participants to review all the pro progress made and identify the challenges encountered in the various parliaments in the implementation of the Nairobi principles. 
share best practices and devise common strategies to accelerate the implementation of Nairobi principles in the various parliaments, share modern trends and best practices in the provision if in, in the provision of effective and efficient legal services to parliaments, including on how to support the ratification and domestica domestication of new protocols of the PAP and other African Union legal and policy instruments. Examine the functional interlinkages of legal counsel and other offices serving in parliaments, other arms of government and the legal fraternity and the public. And also discuss the various contemporary legal and parliamentary issues including the rights of persons with disabilities. Your presence here, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, testifies to your personal interest and commitment and those of your respective parliaments and institutions to the effectiveness and efficiency of parliaments in Africa, which sit at the core of the mandate of the Pan-African Parliament. Among us, I would like to acknowledge the high presence of Honorable Chief Sefania Charumbia, the fourth vice president of the Pan-African Parliament, who has accepted to leave behind other equally important activities to come and grace this event with his presence. I also take this opportunity to express our warm welcome to you, distinguished representatives of African parliaments. We are very delighted to have you here in the Parliament of African Parliaments to participate in this event. I would like to also express our heartfelt gratitude to the Center for Human Rights of the University of Pretoria, the Disability Alliance, Lexus Nisus, for the fruitful collaboration and support which have made this colloquium possible. I also warmly welcome our resource persons and all participants who have taken time and traveled miles to come share their expertise and reflect on the topics proposed for the colloquium. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I look forward to a very interactive and fruitful deliberation on the various topics and programs before you. Once more, on behalf of the Pan-African Parliament, the acting clerk of the Pan-African Parliament, and my, on my own behalf, I would like to warmly welcome you all to this meeting and wish you a fruitful deliberation. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Madame Charlotte, pour ce Thank you very much, uh, Madame uh, Charlotte, uh, for this very touching speech indeed. Without uh, further ado, we um, are going to go to the next uh, uh, speech, uh, which is going to be delivered by Ms. Zuraya. Adikari, Chief Legal Officer, Parliament of the Republic of South Africa, President. Good morning. Good morning, Honorable Chief Sharon Bira, MP, Honorable Joshua Malinga, Advisor in the Office of the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Madam Charlotte Mark, Office in Charge of the Office of the Clerk of the Pan African Parliament members of the Council of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Counsel to Parliaments, Mr. Dubey, Executive Director of Africa Disability Alliance, Professor Franz Balloon, who I believe has not yet joined us, uh, Mr. Malefi, Commercial Director of LexisNexis, members of the African Colloquium of Legal Counsel to Parliaments, <coughs> members of the Secretariat to the Africa Colloquium of Legal Counsel, um, staff members of the Pan-African Parliament and delegates, I greet you and I welcome each and every one of you to this fifth colloquium of legal counsel to parliaments in Africa. To those from elsewhere in South Africa or further afield, very warm welcome to Midrand and to South Africa. I know it's not Cape Town, but it's still South Africa, so you all welcome. This colloquium is a very unique platform and opportunity for us as legal counsel to get together, share learned experiences, and going forward to build on our collective skills. So we invite engagement and networking over the next few days. It is such an amazing opportunity. I certainly am privileged to be standing here welcoming you, and I hope that each one of you make the utmost um, use the opportunity to your advantage. 
I would like to take this opportunity and express our sincere appreciation to our hosts for making this possible. Some of you might not know, but we were initially going to be hosted by Zimbabwe, and then they had changed um, circumstances, financial and otherwise, and um, PAP came to the rescue. So we really appreciate um, them hosting us, and then specifically also to our sponsors, because without them, the event would not have been possible. So we really, really appreciate also the clerk in his absence, uh, Mr. Gali Masaharu, for his tremendous support. Um, to, as well, Mr. Phoebe Clement, I know there were times that he had to endure a lot from us as council to get things moving, and um, it was very stressful to finalize these arrangements in the short time that we had. Um, so thank you to all of those. But I'm getting ahead of myself now, that is thank you. So back to welcoming, as you know, the colloquium is still very young. The colloquium is still very young, and we've made some progress, but we've not yet managed to, to register the colloquium. This is one of the other challenges that we had to work around. The registration would have meant that we could, over the course of the two years, get some sponsorship, get some, um, some funding, uh, going and also to possibly get some subscription fees or registration fees, but because we're not registered as a legal entity, there was no banking account, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know the consequences, and therefore we're specifically thankful to to PAP and our sponsors. Um, we also um, acknowledge our patron in his support of getting the colloquium registered. So hopefully by the time of the next colloquium. In fact, I'm, I'm positive by the time of the next colloquium, we would have resolved a lot of these challenges that uh, was a bit of an obstacle this time around. Um, I hope you enjoy and learn from, this, uh, from the next two days. We have some very exciting speakers, and the pro program was really carefully chosen so that we can get maximum benefit and so that we can um, also gain from experiences of people who we can learn from um, and who can demonstrate by example, you know, the kind of um, environment and challenges that we are faced with. So in this era of political contestation, I'm sure that you're all aware that our landscapes have changed. Every one of us through Africa to a lesser or greater extent have some political challenges and how we navigate those challenges as legal counsel uh, becomes more and more important for us. And um, as these complex realities um, present challenges, they also present opportunities. And I specifically look forward to us using these opportunities for us to get closer together and as the Acting Deputy Clerk said, um, in furtherance of Agenda 2063, I think it's a good time for us also to appeal to the um, Vice President here to perhaps consider including us as a colloquium in um, these annual platforms that they host as PAP from time to time. And this includes um, the, the secretaries, and of course the speakers have their annual uh, conferences. So since these are our principles, it would also be helpful for us to, you know, to piggyback on that, and in that way we can have more regular interaction. So that's an initiative that I think could be considered, and I hope that that uh, will be given some consideration. Um, at this stage, I would just like to, again, welcome all of you, ask for your continued support to the colloquium and um, to the clerks out there as well. We also, as a council, looking at ways to interact more with the clerks so that we can get their support and to get those colleagues who are not here today to join us going forward. A lot of the African um, jurisdictions have austerity measures and financial and budgetary constraints, and I'm sure we can all relate to that. So that was a very big challenge this, uh, this year with this colloquium, and I think with better planning going forward, we could make sure that we send out invitations well in advance so that 
there can be proper budgeting. So we need to reflect on some of these lessons that we've learned. During our interaction, I'd like you to raise those. There will be opportunity to raise all those challenges that you may have had. And at some stage of this colloquium, I also hope that we pause and consider, after we've shared our experiences, what we can do better, what we must stop doing, what we must continue doing, what we must start doing, and um, ultimately in furthering uh, the goal of this conference, which is towards an efficient and effective parliament in Africa, each one of us in our role as legal counsel. And I think we are best placed to, you know, to set that agenda and to take it further. Um, I, in conclusion, would just like to say with this objective in mind that I hope you enjoy the next two days uh, of presentations and interaction. I hope you engage robustly in debate and I look forward to participating and to your participation. I thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Zoraya, for this uh, for these welcoming remarks. And when we talk about the colloquium, we can also discuss its history. It began with one individual, uh, one of the sons of Africa. And here I would like to cite Mr. Ngenye, the clerk of the Senate of the Parliament of Kenya. And he was one of the founders of this uh, colloquium. And uh, we are delighted to welcoming, welcome him here today. Um, and he will be represented by Mr. Jeremiah Ndumbe. Um, uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, I just had my name and I moved forward, so I must apologize for that. Honorable Chief Fortun, Vetania Charumbira, the fourth Vice President of our Pan-African Parliament. Our President, uh, Zoraya, The council members of the colloquium, uh, including uh, our past president, Pius, uh, Guru Moha. Dear delegates, because I also came here as a delegate, uh, our sponsors and partners, I need not name them, distinguished par participants, all protocols observed, I stand before you today on behalf of a patron of a colloquium, uh, those of you who know him, Mr. Jeremiah Nyegenye. He really planned to be here with us today, uh, but being the clerk of the Senate of a Republic, Parliament of the Republic of Kenya, you know the clerk is basically the custodian of the documents of the legislature. So he was awaiting an appointment to take some bills to the president for assent. And he couldn't join us, but he expressed his entire um, spirit. He told me to represent him at the official opening. God willing, if he gets an appointment early, he'll be able to join us in the course of uh, uh, deliberations. Let me begin by, number one, expressing uh, a lot of gratitude uh, to the Pan-African Parliament for accepting to host us. I think uh, those of us who have been in this colloquium for quite some time, we will appreciate that this is the first time we are hosting the colloquium within the presence uh, of an assembly within the presence of any legislature in the continent. Previously, we have hosted them, uh, mostly 
uh, in other venues. So Pan-African Parliament, thank you very much. Uh, I think you are throwing a challenge to us. You are coming closer and closer to where we work. I know we have this, the, the regional parliaments here. ECOWAS, I've seen you on the list. IALA is here. I think it's a challenge. We also want to see how IALA is, how ECOWAS is. Because those are the places where we work. So, thank you very much for that. Gratitude also to the secretariat, the ever tiring secretariat. I don't know. I, I lack words to, to describe them. Uh, I think the colloquium is roughly seven years old. I remember way back in October 2011 when this thing was, Noble Ideas was started. And I hope within this session, I know there are new participants among us. We will be able to rekindle the Nairobi principles. Eleven of them, I think there's a booklet uh, in, in, in which, which, which uh, uh, has, has them in summary in a schedule. The Nairobi principles were the binding principles when we began this colloquium. I hope we'll be able to relieve them. Uh, especially for the people who might be here for the first time. I hope we'll be able to revisit them, evaluate them, discuss them, and be candid enough. One of my joy for standing before we are today is that we are holding this colloquium in the land of uh, greatest statesman probably in Africa, uh, Nelson Mandela. What was he known for? He was known for principles. Choosing to go to prison. Because of principles he believed in. Choosing to leave power after one term. A very bold man. And for me, this is a challenge I want to pass Madam President, sorry for saying that, but this is a challenge I want to pass to the Council. Those of us who hold this colloquium dearly, the Republic of Uganda, you have been very, very, very supportive. South Africa, thank you very much for joining the wagon. Kenya has always been there, now we are three dedicated countries, sorry, Yes, Yala, you've been very consistent. But we have to call a spade a spade. A child grows. When the child is growing, we have to navigate the journey. There are challenges. There are experiences. Bottlenecks. Decisions have to, made, to be made at every step of a journey. So for me, I would have really loved to see this room completely full after seven years of hard labor, the colloquium. We must reassess certain aspects of a colloquium. That's a challenge I'll be throwing to the council. I'm not a council member. Neither is a patron, he can speak, but he doesn't have the decision. Let's look at the principles. Let's look at the basics. Number one, I've shared with some of my colleagues here. Yeah? Let's look at, we look at the issues of our membership. How can we drive up, there are so many lawyers working in parliament all over Africa. How can you reach them individually and make them feel part of a colloquium? Make them own the colloquium. Mm. 
Let's look the issues of funding. I've seen uh, very good partners coming on board. I mean, we all belong to other our organization. As lawyers, I'm sure most of us will know about PALU, the regional groupings, uh, those of us from East Africa, Yala. Uh, back in our own countries, we have our own associations. What makes them drive, move and move and move and move on, that we are not getting it right as a colloquium? What model can we adopt? Mm. Let's look at the partnerships, the interlinkages. There are so many. How do we interlink with the mainstream uh, lawyers associations? The Commonwealth Association of Legislative Council. We have the Secretary here, the representative, Mr. Dr. Okello. What are the interlinkages? I uh, was very impressed when somewhere, I think was it in New Orleans, I met uh, the, the, the former president of a colloquium, lifting the flag of this very, very colloquium, miles and miles away from the continent. Interlinkages, we need them. Let's look at this thing. Let's make bold decisions the way Mandela did. We call a spade a spade and grow this colloquium. The issue of a political class. Look at the IPU model. Look at the uh, CPA model. The lawyer politicians want to participate in a colloquium also. They want to get together. IPU runs parallel. The politicians have their session, the technical people have their session. CPA, same thing. Why is it that this gathering of lawyers must only be for the lawyers who are non-politicians? If you unlock the issue of membership, my view is that you will unlock the issue of funding. Once the political class frees the funding, in fact, the colloquium will more or less be not only an annual event, but there will be more activities in between the colloquium. We must allow the baby to grow, if that's in short what I'm trying to say. Make bold decisions. It's a challenge for the council. Because I think most of us in this room, we really, really have no any other home to go because of our careers we have chosen. This is our association, this is our gathering, this is our colloquium, this is where we exchange our ideas. So we want to grow. We want to grow. We want to welcome others on board to grow with us. And we don't want others to come and peep at us and then disappear. We don't know where they have gone. We want to interchange technology, digital. Nowadays, I don't need to come here physically. I should be able to move with the colloquium wherever I am in my room, in the mobile phone. These platforms, it's a challenge to the council. I know it's voluntary, but nothing good comes without perseverance, without sacrifice, which so far, it has been abundance. If we are to look at the past seven years, colloquium has existed on sacrifice, serious sacrifice. So, in short, let me not speak too much. It's a challenge I'm passing to those of us who are here. Those of us who head institutions, those of us who can make decisions that can make the colloquium grow. I know at some point we look back and be proud that we made a contribution to the colloquium. Yeah. As I said, the clerk of the Pan-African Parliament, Madam, I think I must end by again expressing my gratitude because this is the first time we are getting inside 
the legislature. And once you have allowed us to get in, I think we will not get out. We must, because we work there, we live there, and we must, those of us, I'm sure, if we are to ask most of the members here, they, know, they don't know any other home. They dedicate themselves to the legislature. Day in, day out, they want to make the legislature better. They fight, those of the litigants among us here will tell you, they fight out in the courtroom for act done within the legislature. Those who assist members in the technical aspect, they do it because they love the legislature. So it's only fair uh, that we call up among our members who are present to move an extra mile, show an extra aspect of dedication. It's voluntary, yeah. So that at the end of the day, I mean, I like, I don't know, most of, some of you are members of this, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, this Commonwealth groups, whether it is the, the Commonwealth Law Association. Whenever you go for these conferences, you, you see these old, old, retired professionals. They come in with a card, and they're so happy to print in their card, retired, I don't know what. Retired lawyer, or what? Yeah. Even me, I want, maybe in the next 10 years, I'm not young, but I maybe in the next 20 uh, or 15 years, to be walking around with a card written on when I attend the colloquium. Uh, my card will be written on retired uh, legal counsel to Parliament of Kenya or retired what? What terminology do you coin for ourselves? Yeah. So let's be proud of a colloquium. And on behalf of the Secretariat, which is housed in the Republic of Kenya, we can guarantee you we will always and always and always be at the beckon um, and, 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 and support uh, uh, of the Council. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jeremy, for this wonderful speech. And in the interest uh, of time, because we're running a little bit late, I am not going to uh, comment on the speech, uh, but I just did want to say that it was uh, very close uh, to what a general would do to motivate the troops. And so thank you for that, uh, because uh, uh, this um, really does motivate us. And now we come to the high point of our opening ceremony, uh, the keynote address and official opening of the fifth colloquium that will be made by our Honorable Chief Fortune Zephania Shirambura, fourth Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament. Honorable, you have the floor. Please, uh, please uh, clap uh, while Chief uh, approaches the podium. Good morning. Good morning. I am, I am greeting you first because I see as if you are still tired maybe from your trips to Johannesburg. Uh, the director of the proceedings, Mr. Clement, Clement, but there's a way the name is pronounced, which is better than I'm doing. And may I recognize the president of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Council to Parliament, Ms. Zuraya Adkari, 
my house was organized. My own long time close personality and advisor, the Honorable Senator Joshua Malina, who is also advisor to or in the president of the, also the president in Zimbabwe, the president uh, Mnangagwa, the acting clerk of Pan African Parliament, Charlotte, Ms. Charlotte Mark, my also recognize members of the Council of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Councils to Parliament and continue to recognize Mr. Kudakwashe Dure, the Executive Director of the Africa Disability Alliance. I don't know whether the professor is now in. Professor Franz Vigio, Director of the Center for African Human Rights. There's also Mr. Tabo Malefe, Commercial Director, Lexis Nexis. Then, very important, I need to organize members of the Africa Colloquium of Legal Councils to Parliament. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and the rest of the protocols. I have a speech which I will refer to very much and simply start by saying this is a great moment, at least for me, to stand in front of you this morning. And the date to me will remain very important, 29 October 2019 which gave me an opportunity to interface, interact with legal councils to parliament on the continent of Africa. And I'm standing here, of course, representing the president and the Bureau of PAP. The president is His Excellency Roger Dan Kondo, who is elsewhere on other business, and my other members of the Bureau who are also on other assignments. But this is a great moment, uh, Madam President of the Colloquium. If I read my whole speech, I would take too long because I have so many things that I also want to add to. But I want to say, I want to thank, first of all, the organizers. All the organizers, starting, of course, with the president, will be key. And then our own head, uh, administration at PAP, for hosting this very important event. And uh, that PAP, in its own mandate, one of the reasons why PAP exists, Pan African Parliament, is to offer a platform for the, in the language in the protocol says peoples, African peoples, the word peoples, in, for them to participate. And that word, I'm taking it from the protocol, that the African peoples can participate in one, the integration of the continent and the development of the continent. So what we are doing this morning is basically to, in recognition of that role of Pan-African Parliament, bring together the people of Africa to interrogate certain issues that can take us forward as a continent. So this forum provides us such a peer learning and experience sharing of legal minds who work in parliaments, and even outside parliaments, because in this room is only, not only legal people that are in attendance. So let's take this very, very serious. And then that uh, PAP does host similar gatherings from various uh, dimensions, 
And the president, when she spoke, president of the colloquium, did mention that the PAP does host annually, sometimes biannually, the speakers, African speakers conference every August. August every year, the women's conference, youth forum. And uh, Madam President, you actually requested that you would also want to be included and to participate in some of this. I think speaking for the Bureau myself and speaking for PAP, I say consider that one done. I consider that one done. So Clement, the, the, the acting clerk, please next time don't forget, next August, it actually enriches and strengthens these other gatherings. So I don't think we need to debate that it's a good proposal and Madam President, if it doesn't happen, hold me directly accountable for the speech I've made this morning, assuring that it is done. So if it is not done, I've already given you my number, my card you have. You send me an email that, no, Mr. Vice President, how come it has not happened? So it will happen. So this forum is very important that we exchange the ideas. Exchange ideas on what? This morning I see that the your theme is efficient and effective parliaments in Africa. The law of legal counsel and its predicament of independence and accountable legal services and all the nice jargons about, but I will then want to engage in more of a discussion than, than a speech. You see, the, if I read the whole speech and what you're going to say, there are a lot of nice words. Independence is one key word which I think will feature a lot. A good governance, accountability, of course, capacity, your own capacity, rule of law, human rights. You are likely to use these words very often, and they are here in my speech. They are almost on every page. And of course, it then goes on to see how the African Union and these member states have passed a number of instruments to strengthen issues of good governance, peace and stability, and you have all sorts of things which include the African Charter of Human Rights, Human and Human People's Rights, the Kigali Declaration on Human Rights in Africa, the Protocol on the Statute of the African Court of Justice and Human Rights, the Protocol to the African Charter establishing the African Court on Human and People's Rights, the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and the Good Governance, the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, on the Rights of Women in Africa, the Solemn Declaration on Gender Equality in Africa, the African Charter on the Rights and the Welfare of the Child, the African Youth Charter, and the Draft Protocol of the African Charter on Women and People's Rights on the, on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in Africa. This is just probably 1%. I can go on and on, it can even become boring. Now, the point is, are these things working? Are these things working? Are these uh, protocols, uh, the laws that we've been passing, are they working? And uh, year in, year out, we gather at PAP, we gather at our own parliaments, and I've been a member of parliament, I've served 18 years, this is my 19th year. And at PAP, I've been here almost 14, 15 years. So I also have some questions, which I think this colloquium should interrogate seriously. And the previous speaker was also emphasizing the need to ensure that we challenge the colloquium. 
and he did challenge the colloquium. And I'm also going to challenge further and say, what do we mean by efficient and effective parliament? And how can legal councils contribute to that objective? Efficient meaning what? When you say a legal council in a parliament, parliaments are, from a legal point of view, if they are efficient, what do we mean? Is it the number of laws, lawmaking? Is it the number of laws that you have passed? But if you listen to me about these AU instruments just now, you would always say, no, wait, wait, wait. I think the number of laws only may not be, they mean that doesn't mean you are being effective. You can pass a lot of laws, but nothing much changes also. So where, 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 where are we wrong? Then the issue of justice, rule of law and justice. Is when people say justice, usually they don't think of parliament. They think of the judiciary only, the courts only, and not the parliaments. But yes, you, we do contribute to justice by passing the laws. When we pass law, again, there are fundamental questions. Are there, is anybody from Burkina Faso here? man. When we pass these laws and we celebrate the number of laws that we are passing, there are still questions and legal councils have to be alert to these issues. And is it five years or six, seven years now when the parliament of Burkina Faso was torched, was put on fire by the demonstrating public? I don't know what year was that. I think it's about six, seven years now or so. You're all aware the parliament of Burkina Faso was put on fire. It went into flames. So where were the legal councils when this was happening? It went into flames because parliament passed a law which people did not want. And we went into the streets and demonstrated and burned the whole building and said, what are you doing? It also puts a, into question one, whether these rules that you are passing are actually coming from our people. How can a parliament which is in theory uh, composed of representatives of the people? So when the members of parliament pass this law, where are they, where are they representing the people? So there are laws that are passed that do not in any way, uh, they, are not, they are not in the sink with society. And I think all, all of you will be guilty here and there in terms of your own parliaments. If we went through all the laws, there are certain laws that are being passed that are not even in sync with society. And I've given you that example in the Burkina Faso. People said, why have you, you as parliament, why have you passed this? I won't go into details. You can find out what had happened. So justice starts from the law itself. Although there is in the usual legal world and the public, when you say justice, usually there is the limitation to the judiciary. If the judiciary is independent, there is justice. But that's not the whole equation. The law that the, 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 the judiciary is applying is that law also in sync with the people? That's justice. Do people agree with that law? And we have so many laws that have been passed that people don't agree with. They do the opposite of what you have passed. And this is where legal counsel comes into advice. But a number of countries now have taken certain measures. They have now put in what are called public hearings uh, before a law is passed. But again, are those public hearings effective? 
just continue sharpening those public hearings. Sometimes just a window dressing issue, just to appear to have been, it's what you call in English, a perfunctory exercise, to be seen to have been, to have consulted the public. Yet what cabinet wants will just go as it were. And then we say we consulted the public. And that's why we have problems in Africa sometimes. Because we are not governing with the people. Through the law, proper law, we can govern with the people. And sometimes I don't say I've been 18 years in this business. And uh, there are a lot of questions. And what should the the legal counsel do should be very innovative, identify those weaknesses, and then advise. And I'll come to the issue of advising. How do you advise? You see, legal counsel should make sure that when you make amendments to procedures, stages of bills, this issue uh, of prescribed procedure is very important. Ensure that the detail of it as a lawyer, you make sure that you bind the politicians to doing the right thing by just throwing in something that you know, if this is within the procedure, the politician will be in trouble in trying to put in the, on their own agenda. So they make sure you are very smart on the procedures. Improve them so that the politician cannot escape. If you don't do that, you just talk, you won't succeed. And I'm happy because I'm saying, look, are these laws in sync with your society and the realities. And I want to thank the organizers, Madam President, that you have people in this room from not all, but certainly critical sectors of society. And the, the, the people that are in this room, those that are representing people who have unique challenges of disability. I think that, that you should be complimented for that one. That's, that's very good. And that's every law should look at all those diverse representations from our people. And that the public hearings are not necessarily sufficient uh, because they are not, they, not everybody will ever participate in some of these things. We are putting a lot of uh, emphasis on legal counsel and saying parliament will pass laws. We, we have a, there's a judge in Zimbabwe, she used to be in parliament. So she's a lawyer, a very good lawyer. She became a member of parliament from legal practice. And at the moment, she's a very senior judge uh, and she's in the Constitutional Court now. She once said, you know, before I came to Parliament and from school, in the law school, we learned that pa Parliament passes laws. Parliament passes laws. But when I came to Parliament, I realized that, no, that's not very correct. In fact, laws pass through Parliament. And that is actually very true for all your parliaments. Laws pass through parliament. Because the stage is set before the law comes, the bill comes to parliament. The ruling party will caucus and say, if the ministers will tell their members, they whip them and say, this shall pass. If you debate, you are in trouble. And then when it comes, we simply, yeah, 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 we, we, because, and then we say, Parliament is passed, yet the law has passed through Parliament. Legal counsel, where are you when laws are passing through Parliament? And the Parliament is not passing the laws. And how is that done? That's where the legal counsel's mind should be sharpest. You close the gates by, by making sure that you, you make recommendations where you block. How is it done? First of all, it is done because the minister will come and say, just fast track a particular bill, fast track a particular bill. 
I don't know, I know you come from different parliaments, but in most of your parliaments, there is uh, what we call stages of bills. The minister, and the same laws, rules will say, sometimes you can suspend the, those rules of stages of the rule, then, then parliament agrees, and then you suspend what is called automatic adjournment. It's like if you sit from whatever time, if it is six or seven, it's called the automatic adjournment where the parliament has to end for that day. But they all say, if there's an agent business, can you sit even through the night? And then the minister will just come and say, I want this passed. And then we give in. And then people are dozing. Sometimes we go up to 2 a.m. Only two people are awake. The rest are sleeping. And then you are passing laws for the future of the country. All these tricks, legal counsel, should come in and be sharp. Let me go to the, maybe the, the last part of what I want to share on this date, 29 October 2019, with the legal counsels. And I've, I've put it as the vestitutes of legal advisors in parliament. I'm saying that's the vestitutes. Or I can change it, say the conundrum. We are saying good things about independence, about rule of law, good governance, and yet there's a lot of corruption in all this. And then we see the legal counsel as a key person. But some of the realities which we need to share and see how each region, each parliament is addressing them, is that being, a, what is being, a, you, are, you are advisors. Basically, you don't, you don't yourself vote in the parliament, you don't bring the bills, we just advise, technically. And I see on your program, there is something called uh, avoiding what confrontation with politicians. I, I'm waiting for whatever strategies you have <laughs> to avoid. But, uh, the politicians will tell you, from speaker, chief whip, to everybody, that you are, look, you are our advisor. Please tell, give us good advice. And our doors are open, just come anytime and tell us. Is an advisor, you are free. But uh, no politician on earth opens the door to be told what he doesn't like. The door is open for those people who can tell the politician what they like. And you think when they say, come freely, and you are free to go and tell them to say, this is wrong, don't do, telling a politician. I don't know, you need, I think what you need to do in, your, in this colloquium is to learn more about language. How do you couch a statement to tell them what they don't like but what language? I think it's more about language. What do you say? Because if you say, no, this is not possible, for example, uh, uh, you may be legal counsels, but you are not trained in certain diplomatic language. And I would advise this colloquium, Madam President, to have even in the next, to try and study how best do you communicate bad messages, yet the recipient becomes very excited. That's very important. Because most of the time, legal counsels will be fired for always trying to tell the, the politicians that this is not, in terms of the constitution, this is no, this infringes this and that, this is not good law. They will certainly make sure that whenever an opportunity arises to terminate your contract, they will do it very fast. They will bring in someone who will tell them what they want to hear. So when they say you are free to advise, don't be too excited you may actually be free from employment. <laughs> the freedom is that you have left your job and then you are gone. Uh, I can go on and on. When I meet people like you, uh, you see, politicians like Machiavelli said, the ends justify the means. That's very important. 
This reasonableness and the niceties of law is not in the interest of the politician. If the end is to see that we outmaneuver this other part, that is the objective. So if you advise things that do not help him to outmaneuver the other part, you are irrelevant. So you need to know that, that environment where you operate is a very, very serious environment politically. But it needs a smart person. If you are smart, you can sell through and still manage. Then I will ask you the question, you are in law, yes, in parliament. Some lawyers go to corporate, the corporate world, companies, commercial world. Some lawyers go to government. Some lawyers go to a private practice. You chose parliament, uh, a place which is burning already of people who want to come into power. When you advise the ruling party, the opposition will say this person is political. When you advise something that promotes the interests of political parties, you are again in trouble. Uh, but if you are smart, you will survive. Let me end here and say uh, I'm really excited with this gathering. It also gives hope to the continent of Africa. We may not understand that. I'm saying hope because first of all, we are the worst performing continent on, in the world. We are the worst performing continent. And the accusations are that the executive, which you should hold to account, is not performing. So our, our, our parliament has been sleeping. Why is it that all over the world, a, the governments or the executives in Africa, over whom parliaments should ex, uh, oversight. Our parliaments performing uh, oversight functions. When we saw, we talk of monies, government bleeding, some people uh, stealing, embezzlement, corruption. Where is the parliament? Is key role is to ensure that the executive is held to account. But I can assure you, we have not performed well on that square's parliaments. We have not. And this colloquium should agree that parliaments have not been effective in oversight. The executive. People are crying. Money is for big projects, infrastructure projects, billions, trillions, which are supposed to improve the quality of lives on, on the continent is disappearing and ending up, ended, ending up in foreign accounts elsewhere in, in Europe. And there is no role of parliament to bring all this, but the parliament is not doing it. So what can the legal councils, how, how should you help? You are part of that bleeding because you have not given us enough law which can protect the public from those vices. And please don't sleep well as a legal council of the parliament. If Africa is still poor, it means parliaments and their legal councils have not been also very effective in coming up with certain frameworks that close all these abuses of offices and the public funds. I'll end here. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I think uh, I want you to confess something to say that uh, uh, if you want to be a wiser or perhaps more skilled. Uh, personally, I have experienced that if there's someone 
whom, uh, from which I get or I gain more intelligence and more wisdom after meeting them is uh, Honorable Chief Charambia. And I think we can... Uh, Um, it is uh, overwhelming to comment on his speech, but I think uh, I will give that task to uh, Madame Zuraya, the president of the colloquium. Thank you very much, Honorable Vice President. I am really privileged to be able to thank you. I was really hoping I'll have this opportunity. Thank you for those wise, wise words. Um, your guidance and wise words are very well noted. And also just to the, uh, on behalf of the patron, uh, we note the challenges that we faced. We note your um, uh, urging us to make good on those challenges. But Honorable Vice President, with regards to public hearings um, in our legislative process, we have learned the hard way. And your words come at a perfect time for us and for the rest of Africa. Um, indeed, our oversight can be improved. We've also, in our strat planning in South Africa, now focused on how to better ensure that oversight is done more effectively and ultimately that is what we need to do to uplift the poor so thank you very much that is the one way to address um, the inequalities that exist clement i cannot agree more i think just from this past few minutes i have learned so much and i can imagine the inspiration that you get from the honorable vice president the role of legal counsel, Honorable Vice President, is not unknown to us, but indeed you are correct, and you've touched a raw nerve, that we should not be coerced into taking shortcuts. And often we are vulnerable and we feel exposed because we know what our principles want. And you know, your, your um, remark towards the end just made me smile, and I have some of my colleagues sitting here, and they know and they will attest to the fact that I often tell them, it's not what you say, it is how you package it and how you say it. So, and they are nodding because that we have learned. I've been in this position for about 20 years, and over that 20 years, you learn it's not, you have to say what you have to say. So advice has to be consistent. It has to, that integrity must be there. But you can still say that, but it depends on how you say it. So protocol is very important without compromising the integrity of your advice or your opinion. So yes, I, I smile because that takes a long time to learn. And this is why we are here, to learn from each other and from our collective experiences. And then last but not least, thank you very much for the undertaking that you have made. Thank you so very much. I think that um, uh, Mr. Jeremiah will also go a long way to getting the buy-in from our principals and it will enable us to, on a more sustained basis, have engagement as legal counsel, ensure that we get the messages um, from, what, from our principles and um, ensure that there will be continued growth. So thank you. Excellence, uh, honorable. Honorable Chief uh, Chirumbira, Honorable Joshua Malinga, dear guests, we have uh, finished with our opening ceremony. We now invite all participants to accompany the fourth uh, Vice President of the Pan-African Parliament for a family photo. From uh, media. Uh, following which uh, we will be invited to have tea, uh, which will be served 
uh, on the right hand side as you um, uh, you exit the chamber uh, and we will be expected to be back uh, in the chamber at a quarter past 11. Uh, on this uh, note, we thank you so much for your attention, for your participation, and we look forward to having you back. Um, I also uh, uh, have the, the honor again to inform you that uh, uh, the Honorable Vice President uh, is uh, uh, going to be back uh, and uh, participate in the uh, subsequent uh, session before lunch. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, bien de bonnes choses. Have a wonderful tea. Merci beaucoup. Let's all please proceed to the photo session. Outside to the left. Outside to the left. Thank you. Is done. Consequently, when a protocol is made and signed, it should be ratified. But ratification is not enough in itself. The essence of ratifying a protocol is to get it implemented. And implementation is meant to do something. So the protocol, Pan African Protocol, Malabo Protocol, was signed and has been ratified so far by only 10 countries. But the PAP needs 28 ratifications for the protocols to be implemented. And the essence of the Malabo Protocol is to make the Pan-African Parliament fully free.